Hi, I'm Dr. Molly Gebrian, and you are watching the first in a series of videos on something called spaced practicing. This body of research goes back to the late 1800s, to the 1880s, so it's been around for a long time, but it goes against how we are taught to practice as musicians because what it basically shows is that the more breaks you take when trying to learn something, the faster you learn it and the longer you remember it. This is really counterintuitive for classical musicians especially because our culture of practicing says practice every day for hours and hours and hours, lots of repetitions, don't take days off, don't take a break. If you do that, you're lazy and you're not gonna perform well. But the research is overwhelming in that our culture of practicing just simply doesn't work very well. And I think that part of the reason this is difficult for classical musicians to wrap their heads around is because we have a lot of fears that feed into this culture of constant practicing. So we feel like, you know, I have so much music to learn all the time. I can't take time off from it. I have to be practicing every possible second. Or, you know, if I don't practice this hard shift or this hard run or whatever it is, every single day, I'm gonna forget how to do it. I think a lot of us also have irrational fears like, well, if I take days off or if I take even a couple hours off, I'm going to forget how to play my instrument, which obviously is absurd. But I think there's a little bit of that sort of irrational fear going on for many of us. But I think we also all have all had the experience of taking a day or a couple days off, not because we wanted to, but because we got sick or we got hurt or something. And then we came back to whatever we were practicing before we took the days off and miraculously we could play it better. I think we've all had that experience of taking time off, coming back, and suddenly the problems are solved. I think we've all had the experience too of, you know, working on a piece and then putting it down for a couple months or years and coming back to it. And suddenly it's not nearly as difficult as it was before beyond what you would expect by just getting better at your instrument. And even though I think we've all had these experiences, I think we all also discount them as something just like kind of nice that happened, but also random and like, no, I'm not gonna count on this as a practice strategy, right? I'm not gonna take time off on purpose to make it better. That seems like it couldn't possibly work. But the research I'm gonna share with you today suggests otherwise, very strongly otherwise, and I've actually completely changed the way I practice due to this research. So let's look at it. So a lot of the research on space practice looks at studying for tests. So studying for a vocabulary test or a history test or a biology test or something like that. And all of these studies basically find that if you space your studying out over several days, you do much better than doing it all at once on one day. So for instance, it's much better to study for an hour every day on three different days than three hours all at once on one day. Um, so you can use this information too for studying for your classes for school. But we know that the brain handles that kind of information and the kind of motor skill information that we use as musicians differently. And so it's important for us as musicians to look at research, looking at acquiring motor skills. There isn't great research looking at this on musicians, but there is a lot of research looking at surgery students acquiring, acquiring surgical skills. So we're gonna look at those studies first. The first surgery study we're going to look at had two groups of students. One of the groups of students trained on the surgical skills they were trying to acquire for three hours, so one big three-hour block. The other group of students practiced for 40 minutes, then they took a 20-minute break, then they practiced for another 40 minutes, they took another 20-minute break, and then they practiced once more for 40 minutes. So they only practiced for a total of two hours, so 40 minutes three times separated by 20-minute breaks. So these graphs are showing the results of their training. So the black bars show their scores on the surgical skills they're learning prior to training. The gray bars show their level of skill after the training. The right side of each graph is showing the spaced learning group. So that's the group that had 40 minutes of practice, 20 minute break, 40 minutes of practice, 20 minute break, 40 minutes of practice. And you can see that even though the spaced learning group only trained for two hours, they are doing much better after training than the control group who practiced for three hours. So the control group practiced for a whole extra hour and they are not doing as well as the group that had breaks that only practiced for two hours. 
So that's pretty surprising evidence, right? You practice for less time and you do better, but a lot of the research in this area on space practice shows exactly this. You study or practice for less time with breaks and you do better than if you do it all at once. All right, this next study that we're gonna look at was looking at how well a skill learned in one domain transfers to a different domain. So again, this is using surgical students. And in this case, they learned certain surgical skills in a skills lab, and then they had to apply those skills on a live anesthetized rat. So they had to go from the lab situation to an, an actual living creature um, and apply those skills. So for us as musicians, this would be like you practice a certain skill, for instance, um, double stops for string players in the context of your etude, and then you can apply those skills to your piece. So you're taking skills learned in one domain and applying it to a different domain. So these graphs here are showing the results from this study where they had to transfer their skills from the lab situation to a live anesthetized rat. These graphs are showing their performance on a pretest before they ever practiced anything, and then how well they performed on this transfer test. In this study, the masked practice group, so that's the group that did all their practicing all at once, they had four training sessions all in one day. The spaced practice group also had four training sessions, but they were once a week spread over four weeks. So every Monday for a month, for instance. The gray boxes in these graphs are showing the masked practice group, whereas the white boxes are showing the spaced practice group. And if you compare the pretest to the transfer test, you can see that the spaced practice group is doing much better on the transfer test. Um, if, especially if you look at the graph in the upper left-hand corner and the one in the lower right-hand corner, you can see that between the pretest and the transfer test, the masked practice group, those are those gray boxes, they don't make any improvement, right? They're doing exactly the same. Whereas if you look at the white boxes, they get better between the pretest and the transfer. That's what you'd expect, right? You, you train and then you get better. Um, and so, this study also found that the space practicing was better for performance overall, but the really interesting thing to me about this study is that when you space out your practicing, it transfers better to other situations, whereas if you don't space it out, it doesn't seem to transfer at all, at least in this study. And then the final study from surgical training that I want to look at right now measured not how well they did pretest, post-test, but how many students, what percentage of the students reached proficiency. And remember, these are surgical students, so it's really important that surgeons are proficient, right? We really want our surgeons to be proficient. So they measured at the end of training what percentage of the students had reached um, the threshold for being considered proficient at whatever skill it was. So this study also had a masked practice group and a spaced practice group. So the masked practice group did three trainings consecutively. So back to back, three separate trainings. The spaced practice group also had three trainings, but they were once a week, just like the last one we looked at. So every Monday for three weeks in a row, for instance. So the results of this study were really astounding to me. This table here is showing the number of students, the percentage of students who reached proficiency in each group. And you can see that in the masked practice group, so that's the group that had their three blocks of training consecutively all in one day, they are not doing so well. So this pipe cleaner thing, whatever that was, 11% reached proficiency, that is not very good. Now look at the numbers for the spaced group. So they also had three blocks of training, but one block per week for three weeks. So their numbers are way better, 11% versus 70%, 39% versus 90%. This is a huge, huge difference. So these are just three studies from a multitude of studies that find that when you take breaks, when you space out your practicing, you learn more, you learn it faster, it transfers better, and you reach proficiency sooner. So my question looking into this research was, well, why? Like, it seems really counterintuitive, at least to me, that you take more breaks and like, and yet you learn more and you do better, that, that seems really weird, right? Because we think, okay, while I am practicing, my brain is working really hard and learning the information. When I'm just vegging out on the couch, like my brain is not getting better at the viola. 
But that's actually exactly what's happening, believe it or not. So in part two, I'm going to describe what is going on in the brain that enables us to get better when we're just sitting there doing nothing. So I hope you'll join me over in part two.